Welcome to 60 Skills. The topic of today's lecture is yogis and monks, or yogis versus monks. Take your pick. Now, the difference between a yogi and a monk can easily be described as the difference between someone who practices mostly on their own and somebody who practices within the context of a religious order. Now, there are advantages to both, and I'm going to go over some of those today. Because a lot of people have this myth in their mind that they're going to run off to a temple somewhere and magically become enlightened and a master level practitioner. That does in fact happen. However, what's more than likely is you're going to run off to the temple and end up becoming a carpenter, a CPA, an administer of a temple complex, or something, or an academician, or something along those lines. But we'll get into that in a moment. So, okay. What is a yogi? A yogi is basically a high-level meditative and yogic practitioner of an esoteric or occult system, depending upon how the culture wants to define that, who has developed some, uh, some degree of ability. Now, this can be a magical ability, and this tends to be more common amongst shamanistic practitioners, or it can be an enlightenment-related ability. Ideally, it's going to be both. Now that said, when it comes to yogis and monks, in private, in societies that have well-defined traditions for these things, they'll admit the yogis are better. Now, why is this? Okay, as was mentioned previously, when you become a monk, assuming you're joining a system that has a vibrant meditative tradition associated with it, and not all of them do, you will get meditative training. However, it's a religious order, which means they do things other than sit around practicing meditation all day long. So yes, that order will support your meditative development at key points in time, but at other points in time, they're going to have a variety of expectations. And it depends upon the role that organization chooses for you. If you're chosen to be an academic, for example, you're going to spend most of your time reading and writing and giving the occasional speech. If, on the other hand, you are selected to be part of a service organization, you will be serving other people, helping the poor, giving various rituals, funerals, birthdays, all of this kind of thing. But it doesn't just end there, because some of these religious organizations, depending upon how large and well-established they are, don't just need conventional clergy. They might need carpenters, or people to work in the kitchen, or other such things. And since those day-to-day -day needs take the predominant amount of action to make the organization work, guess what you're going to be spending most of your time doing? not practicing. So again, in many ways, this doesn't differ a whole lot from corporate or military or conventional life. Where it does differ is those organizations do cater to a small group of people who will be serious hardcore practitioners. It's just not the majority of the people within the organization. And if you're coming in as an outsider, either culturally or ethnically, or what have you, your, one of your odds of achieving the top spot, so to speak, are not terribly high. Okay, that's the monk end of the equation. Well, what about the yogi end of the equation? Well, there are famous yogis out there, and you can read historical stories about them, and you can see them in modern times. The downside to being a yogi is you're pretty much on your own. Now, some cultures are much more comfortable with this than others. Indian society, for example, is, I wouldn't say perfectly comfortable with this, but much more open to it than, say, North American society for the most part. Now, if you choose to be a yogi, a lot of times this comes along with being a renunciate, as in you've given up on traditional society 
and separated yourself from it. The result of which is you don't receive much in the terms of material support. So most yogis are pretty poor. And that's just as true in the modern era as it ever was in the ancient era. The whole begging for alms and living out of a backpack is pretty common for these guys. They teach the occasional class. They teach techniques to people occasionally, frequently for money, because that's what allows them to support themselves. But they're generally not supporting a family and generally don't have a vibrant life in society. This isn't bad from the standpoint of they do the minimum necessary to survive materially to maximize the amount of time they have to actually practice. And this gets back to that part I said earlier about yogis generally being better than monks. In terms of the meditative process, you're going to be best at whatever you spend the majority of your time on. Yogis simply spend more time working on the meditative process. Now, it's done usually in a way where it doesn't benefit many people outside themselves because they don't have access to the material resources necessary to do much for other people. Yeah, and this isn't some conspiracy thing. This isn't society trying to get anybody. This isn't the government out to shake a finger at somebody. It's simply a matter of if you spend most of your time practicing, that doesn't lead much time to pursue material stuff. And if there's nobody there to support you, this is going to be very hard. Now, as far as the meditative community goes, we tend to say a lot about the people who succeed commercially esoterically. But keep in mind, this is a tiny fraction of the people out there who actually practice. So becoming a yogi doesn't require a vow of poverty. It just makes it very hard to make a living. And since you're doing it all on your own and nobody's really helping you, well, chances are you're gonna be pretty poor. So this is a little speech on the difference between yogis and monks and the advantages and disadvantages of being one or the either or the other. So if you enjoyed today's talk, please hit the like button down below and, cons and consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you'd like to learn more about the 60 skills curriculum, please check out the links in the details portion of the video down below. Otherwise, train hard and be well.